There's an algorithm called momentum or gradient descent with momentum that almost always works faster than the standard gradient descent algorithm. In one sentence, the basic idea is to compute an exponentially weighted average of your gradients and then to use that gradient to update your weights instead. In this video, let's unpack that one sentence description and see how you can actually implement this. As the most of an example, let's say that you're trying to optimize a cost function which has contours like this. So the red dot denotes the position of the minimum. Maybe you start a gradient descent here. And if you take one iteration of gradient descent, either batch or mini batch gradient descent, maybe you end up heading there. But now you're on the other side of this ellipse. You kind of, uh, and if you take another step of gradient descent, maybe you end up doing that. And then another step, another step, and so on. And you see that gradient descents will, you know, sort of take a lot of steps, right? And just slowly oscillate um, toward the minimum. And these up and down oscillations slows down gradient descent and prevents you from using a much larger learning rate. In particular, if you were to use a much larger learning rate, you might end up overshooting and end up diverging like so. And so the need to prevent the oscillations from getting too big forces you to use a learning rate that's not um, itself too large. Another way of viewing this problem is that on the vertical axis, you want your learning to be a bit slower because you don't want those oscillations. But on the horizontal axis, you want faster learning. Right, because you want it to aggressively move from left to right toward that minimum, toward that red dot. So here's what you can do if you implement gradient descent with momentum. On each iteration, or more specifically, um, during iteration t, you would compute the usual derivatives dw, db, I'll omit the superscript square bracket l's, but you compute dw, db on the current mini batch. And if you're using batch gradient descent, then you know, the current mini batch would be just your whole batch. And this works as well of a batch gradient descent. So if your current mini batch is your entire training set, this works fine as well. And then what you do is you compute v dw to be beta v dw plus one minus beta dw. So this is similar to when we're previously computing v theta equals beta v theta plus one minus beta theta t, right? So it's computing moving average of the derivatives for w you're getting. And then you similarly compute v db equals that plus one minus beta times db. And then you would update your weights using w gets updated as w minus the learning rate times instead of updating it with dw with the derivative you would update it with v dw and similarly b uh, gets updated as b minus alpha times v db so what this does is smooth out the steps of gradient descent for example let's say that the last few derivatives you computed were this this, 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 this. If you average out these gradients, you find that the oscillations in the vertical direction will tend to average out to something closer to zero. So in the vertical direction, where you want to slow things down, this will um, average out positive and negative numbers, so the average will be closer to zero. Whereas on the horizontal direction, all the derivatives are pointing to the right in the horizontal direction, so the average in the horizontal direction will still be pretty big. So that's why with this algorithm, with a few iterations, um, you find that the gradient descent with momentum ends up eventually just taking steps that are much smaller oscillations in the vertical direction, but are more directed toward the horizontal, to just moving quickly in the horizontal direction. And so this allows your algorithm to you know, take a more straightforward path or less to damp out the oscillations in its path to the minimum. One intuition for this momentum, which works for some people and not for everyone, is that if you're trying to minimize you know, a bow-shaped function, right? This, this is really the contours of a bow, 
um, I guess I'm not very good at drawing. If you're trying to minimize this type of bow shape function, then these derivative terms you can think of as providing acceleration to a ball that you're rolling downhill. And these momentum terms you can think of as representing the velocity. And so imagine that you have a bow and you take a ball and the derivative imparts acceleration to this little ball. It's a little ball that's rolling down this hill, right? And so it rolls faster and faster uh, because of acceleration. And beta, because this number is a little bit less than one, this plays the role of friction and it prevents your ball from you know, speeding up uh, without limit. But so rather than um, gradient descent just taking every single step independently of all previous steps, now your little ball can roll downhill and gain momentum, but you can accelerate down this bow and therefore gain momentum. I find that this uh, ball ro rolling down a bow analogy, it seems to work for some people who enjoy physics intuitions, but it doesn't work for everyone. So if this analogy of a ball rolling down a bow doesn't work for you, don't worry about it. Finally, let's look at some details on how you implement this. Here's the algorithm. And so you now have two hyperparameters, uh, the learning rate alpha, as well as this parameter beta, which controls your exponentially weighted average. The most common value for beta is 0 0.9. We're averaging over the last 10 days temperature. So this is like averaging over the last 10 iterations gradients. And in practice, beta equals 0 0.9 works very well. Uh, feel free to try different values and do some hyperparameter search, but 0 0.9 appears to be a pretty robust value. Well, and how about bias correction, right? So do you want to take VDW and VDB and divide it by 1 minus beta to the T? In practice, people don't usually do this because after just 10 iterations, your um, moving average will have warmed up and there's no longer a bias estimate. So in practice, I don't really see people uh, bothering with bias correction when implementing gradient descent or momentum. And of course, this process initialized with VDW equals zero. Note that this is a matrix of zeros with the same dimension as DW, which is the same dimension as W, and uh, VDB is also initialized to a vector of zeros with the same dimension as DB, which in turn has the same dimension as B. Finally, I just mentioned that if you read the literature on gradient descent with momentum, often you see it with um, this term omitted, with this 1 minus beta term omitted. So you end up with VDW equals beta VDW plus DW. And the net effect of using this version in purple is that VDW ends up being scaled by a factor of 1 minus beta or really 1 over 1 minus beta. And so when you're performing these gradient descent updates, alpha just needs to change by a corresponding value of um, or 1 over 1 minus beta. In practice, both of these will work just fine. It just affects um, what's the best value of the learning rate alpha. But I find that this particular formulation is a little less intuitive because one impact of this is that if you end up tuning the hyperparameter beta, then this affects the scaling of VDW and VDB as well. And so you end up needing to retune the learning rate alpha as well, maybe. Um, so I personally prefer the formulation that I have written here on the left rather than leaving out the 1 minus beta term. But uh, So I tend to use the formula on the left, the printed formula with the 1 minus beta term. But, but both versions, having beta equals 0 0.9 is a common choice of hyperparameter. It's just that alpha, the learning rate, would need to be tuned differently for these two different versions. So that's it for gradient descent with momentum. This will almost always work better than the straightforward gradient descent algorithm without momentum. But there's still other things we could do to speed up your learning algorithm. Let's continue talking about these in the next couple of videos.